Mary was born on April the 30th, 1662, at St. James Palace, London. Mary's father was James II of England of the Royal House of Stuart. Mary's mother was Anne Hyde, James' first wife. Anne died in March 1671. James inherited the throne after the death of his brother, Charles II, in February 1685. Charles left no heirs, and the succession was not direct, because while Charles was alive, James converted to Catholicism in 1668. After the English Reformation and events such as the Gunpowder Plot of 1605, Catholics were frowned upon in England. In 1679, a group of politicians managed to convince Parliament to exclude James from the succession because of his faith, but his brother kept him in the natural succession. One of the conditions for his reinstatement was that James ensured that Mary and her younger sister, Anne, born 1665, were brought up as Protestants. Young Mary had a graceful figure, with long dark hair, brown eyes, and a smooth white complexion. Mary was a little taller than average and danced well. Encouraged by Charles II to secure the goodwill of Protestant subjects, Mary married her cousin, William, Prince of Orange, on November 4, 1677. William was a Dutch Protestant, not particularly handsome. He was short, smaller than his wife, slightly hunched forward, had a hooked nose and black teeth, and his character was brooding and humorless. On learning that she was to marry him, Mary wept for a day and a half. But as time went by, the couple eventually established a strong bond. Mary was an affectionate and loving wife, while William had mistresses, surrounded by rumors that he was fond of young men. When her father took the throne, Mary became heiress and remained so, as James' second wife, Mary of Modena, was ill-fated in childbirth, and all the couple's children died young. The situation changed dramatically on June 10, 1688, when James and Mary had a son, James Francis Edward. He would eventually be raised as a Catholic, just like his parents, a major concern for many parliamentarians. There were rumors that James planned to make England Catholic again. Even without much evidence of this intention, the king ignited suspicions by appointing Catholics to many important positions of power. James was also too authoritarian in the view of some politicians, ignoring laws, wrongfully enforcing others, and even dismissing Parliament, as in November 1685. While many expected the king to die a natural death and be replaced by the Protestant Mary, the birth of James Francis Edward changed everything. A group of seven prominent Protestants went looking for a solution. William of Orange was an obvious choice to replace James II. He was Protestant, grandson of Charles I, and, of course, married to Mary. Despite recent naval wars, Britain and the Netherlands were natural allies against Catholic France, the dominant country on the continent. Perhaps motivated more by military opportunities than anything else, William accepted the invitation of the English Protestants and began an invasion. The Dutchmen and an army of up to 21,000 men landed in Devon, England, on November 5, 1688. Abandoned by some of his closest allies and at a loss for what to do, James tried to flee, but was captured. William allowed his father-in-law to leave England unhurt, and the deposed king joined his family in France. The English throne was left vacant, and Parliament registered the abdication as having occurred on December 23, 1688, when James left the English coast. The next steps were a little bit more convoluted. The House of Commons wanted a joint government between William and Mary. Mary's view was that William should rule as her father's regent, as she had no ambition to do so alone. The House of Lords wanted Mary to rule by herself and preserve the natural line of succession. But William did not want a minor role, threatening to walk out and wreak havoc. On February the 13th, 1689, Parliament decreed that the couple would rule jointly, although in practice, William was the only one exercising sovereign powers. Mary ruled formally, but only during periods when William was absent from the kingdom. William III and Mary II were crowned at Westminster Abbey on April 11th. The joint reign is often referred to as simply as the reign of William and Mary. This accession marked the Glorious Revolution, as there was minimal violence and the kingdom's traditions were preserved. In the following years, Parliament secured its active role in the new system of government, ushering in a constitutional monarchy. This was established by the Bill of Rights on December 16, 1689. 
Parliament was given ultimate authority in the key ideas of passing laws and raising taxes. No monarch could maintain their own standing army, and only Parliament could declare war. A new monarch had to swear to defend the Protestant Church upon coronation. Finally, no Catholic or individual married to a Catholic could be king or queen again. In 1689, James II tried unsuccessfully to return from exile and regain the throne by invading Catholic Ireland, only to be defeated by William in July 1690. It fell to the Jacobites to try to restore the Stuarts through James II's son. This uprising marked the 18th century. William was king for a brief time. He revealed his true aims when he involved England in the conflict against France, known as the Nine Years' War from 1688 to 1697, with no gains for either side. There were suspicions about William because he was not English and his behavior was questionable. For these reasons, Mary became the popular monarch. After three successive foreign and Catholic queens, the English finally had an English Protestant queen, as they so desperately wanted. However, after William's return from the war, Mary faded into the background. Mary only had three main interests, gardening, collecting, and improving the morals of her subjects. Regarding the last, she tried to reduce the rates of prostitution, drunkenness, swearing, and a lack of respect for Sundays. She also played an active role in important appointments in the Anglican Church. Mary's pious image worked with Protestants, but Jacobites and Catholics targeted her for the sin of breaking the Fifth Commandment and going against her father's wishes. Mary's enemies suggested that her childlessness was a punishment from God. In 1689, William and Mary bought Nottingham House in the London suburbs and turned it into Kensington Palace. This became the couple's favorite royal residence. The Queen also oversaw new landscape gardens at her country residence, Hampton Court Palace. The royal marriage endured. Although they were not particularly in love, they were a good political duo. Mary represented the continuity of the Stuart line, English nationality and piety. William represented Protestant military power. As the king himself said, he was to win enemies and she was to win friends. A major problem for the couple was the lack of heirs as they had only three stillborn babies. Mary contracted smallpox in December 1694 and died at Kensington Palace on the 28th of that month. The late queen was buried in Westminster Abbey. William was distraught by Mary's death at just 32 and refused to remarry. When he formally received the condolences of parliamentarians, the king was so overcome with emotion that he was unable to respond. When William III died without heirs in March 1702, Mary's sister, Anne, became queen between 1707 and 1714. She was the last of the Stuart monarchs and was succeeded by George I of the House of Hanover.